Hello and welcome guys. Today, this is another video about the EU4 mechanics. So this is basically a guide. So today we're going to talk about EU4 game pacing. Now what is exactly game pacing? I mean, it used to be pretty much untold and there's no indication in the game back in the day. But these days, we have these ages which basically outlined the basics for you, for new players as well. Now, there are four ages in the game. Discovery, Reformation, uh, absolute, Absolutism, and um, um, Revolution. So from 1444 to 1821, you basically have all these things. Uh, you go through all of them. And uh, the longest one is Revolution. <coughs> The uh, shortest one is Discovery. So today, I want to just basically outline what you should do in each age to make your nation great again. Now, most of you already know that, hey, if you want to conquer stuff, you want to get admin efficiency, because it reduces the uh, war score cost, it reduces the coring cost, and uh, hey, if you want to blob, you need uh, administrative ideas and humanist because administrative ideas reduce your core creation cost, also your core creation time. If you want to core a lot of things, this is going to save you a lot of points in, <clears throat> in the long run. And humanist is the ultimate rebel prevention, the, the ultimate solution to rebels. And no, you don't gas them. You, you go humanist ideas. So anyway, today in this video I want to just tell you how and what you should capitalize on in each of these ages, like what you should be doing. I mean, technically speaking, I am going to tell you from my experience of doing world conquests, or rather large conquests. I mean, a lot of achievements in the game are basically that you start as a nation that is quite small and then you expand, expand and expand, grow very large and conquer a certain area. And um, for example, I mean, I can just give you an example out of my head. For example, some of you that says, hey, as Peskov, you will have to get 100 Strauss units. Well, how are you going to get 100 Strauss units? You need a lot of force limits. How do you get force limits? You expand. You get a lot of provinces and a lot of development. That's how you get force limit. Uh, as Byzantium, conquer, conquer these, conquer these, conquer, uh, I don't know. As the Ryuku, conquer the world. <laughs> but anyway, let's get started. So first of all, in Age of Discovery, usually it lasts from the beginning of the game until the beginning of 1500. But uh, it depends on, on the RNG, because once the Reformation starts, then it starts counting down 10 years. And um, before that, there's nothing you can do to stop it or change how it works, uh, how, when it's going to happen. So it's purely RNG. I've seen the earliest, it happens by 1480. So you, you really can't do anything about it. But uh, anyhow, let's, let's divide this as one, the first phase of the game. The fir and then, so what you want to do right here in 1444 to 1500 is counterintuitively, some people think, you should expand as much as you can, be it to survive as a small nation, like, uh, yeah, small nation, like Byzantium. Just take as much as you can as a small nation, or, or expand as much as you can as a medium-sized nation, like Bohemia, so you can be the biggest guy in 1500. Some people even think that if they don't expand enough, before 1500, 1600, they are not going to be able to complete a world conquest. Now, that is very, very wrong. Now, because in this age, you have a lot of things to do, and you have not enough resources to do everything. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Now, we all know that the most important resources in the game are money and monarch coins. Now, money is something that will grow, right? As the technology goes up, you gain more production money and you gain more trade money. And also, you will also start to unlock new buildings, which further boost the amount of money coming out of your provinces. And that means money gets less of and less of an issue later on. And even so, when you've taken ideas that reduce the amount of uh, the, the costs of your army, and which is basically where where you spend most of your money on, right? I mean, for example, what's the Ottoman? You're spending almost a third, a third of your money by the starting date on on your army, so your standing army. Now forts you can delete, but armies are the one that actually wins you the war. And not to mention the uh, artillery is extremely useful but extremely expensive. So in order to win wars, you need money, right? And early game money is in short supply. And so it's not exactly the most ideal time to fight expensive wars. And then secondly, you have monarch coins. Now I'm going to show you something some people might not know. Is that in 1444, you are only nine years away from Tech 5. And actually, this number is a lot lower than what you're supposed to get uh what you're supposed to get like if you tack up from four to uh let's say from 10 to 11 and i'll tell you why now if we go to in in two months into the game which is instantly passed that's eight years so you have to go from or let's say zero points you start with maybe a hundred points you have to go from 100 points to 600 points to buy Tech 4. And that usually almost gets you all the way to 1450. And that time, and, and that's considering you have a reasonably good monarch. And after that, you actually have to chase your way into Tech 5 already. So between Tech 3 and Tech 5, if you don't want to be behind in Tech, you actually have no monarch point for you to spare to fight wars and then core things. And obviously, you do want tech 5 in uh, Miltech. Miltech is not legible in the early game. And then you also have admin tech, which unlock the first idea slot. So you really want to get that idea slot unlocked ASAP, right? So by that logic, unless you're someone with a very good king like the Ottomans, you really don't have time and points to generate to be, be uh, uh, catching up in tech. Now, you might say, hey, it doesn't matter, right? Like, I just don't, I just take mill tech and I ignore the rest. Now, theoretically, you can do that. But when you think about it, hey, how about let's get administrative idea first before you go that far? Because obviously, if you say you will kill Byzantium, hey, it's 228 points to call Constantinople, if you're not the Ottomans. I mean, it's just a bunch of provinces, right? It's just a bunch of provinces, but it takes 10 points, 10 admin points per development to core. And that's considerable for each war you win. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're not taking stuff, why do you fight the war? Unless you're playing tall. But, hey, when you think about it, a lot of these good provinces have high development, so at the end of the day, you do want to get admin. Especially in the early game. So, I'm borderline. In the early game, what you should do if you plan on conquering a lot of things later on, is that you actually don't want to go into war right away. Wars are expensive in money and manpower, and which both of which are in short supply. And what you should do is to buy advisors. I mean, 
it's one ducat a month to buy a level 1 advisor, and then you get uh, three of them, which is only three ducats, which can easily be lost if you go and fight a war. But if you don't, you have three points per month, and that will considerably booster your tech ability, your point generation, and ultimately, you want to be keeping up in tech and start filling out your first idea groups. Because first idea group win games, right? For example, if you take defensive ideas, for 800 military points, you get more extra morale that is going to win you almost every battle. It's like 15%, it's almost like France. France got 20%, Castile's got 15%, Austria got 10%. You have to take something that helps you either in coring or to win wars. So, this is what I want to say for this age. Between 1444 to 1500, there's really not much you can do. Because you don't have the points, you don't have the money, you don't have the manpower. And considering late game, you get more money, which means you can spend more on advisors too. So, don't do shit, is what I can suggest for this early game period. 